first start off with a couple statistics about Kentucky, and then I'm going to get into the, the more about the 1855 Know Nothing riots here in Louisville and uh, other German stuff if I got time. It might, might be a two-parter. Okay, so health, yahoo.net, articles, women's health, uh, the 10 worst states for women's health. Kentucky is considered one of the worst states for women's health. Uh, one of the top ten. While Kentucky rarely ranks in last place for most measures of women's health, there's a number of factor that, uh, factors that drag down the health of women living in the bluegrass state. In almost every county in the state's eastern mountain coal fields region, women's life expectancy declined between 1987 and 2007. So women's life expectancy in eastern Kentucky are, is declining. And the percentage of women without health insurance was 20.8% in 2010, which is a rank of 40 among the states. So Massachusetts was in first place by having 5.2% that didn't have health insurance. With women, one-fifth of women in Kentucky does not have health care. They don't have health insurance. And since they're the mothers of our children, that seems like a bad idea. But it's not all bad, they said in Kentucky, uh, because Kentucky has low rates of chlamydia. It's 4% in 2010, which 4% seems to be a lot to me. That's one out of 25 people's got chlamydia. I didn't realize chlamydia was that widespread. Uh, but it's compared with 7.4% with the rest of the United States. So compared with the rest of the United States, Kentucky has less chlamydia. So that's that's a success, Kentucky, we can, we can be proud of. We don't have as much chlamydia as everybody else even though our women don't have health insurance and their life expectancy is going down, especially in eastern Kentucky. So uh, the 10 most depressing states in the United States, Kentucky is the top 10 for the most depressing states. Rates of depression, this comes as health.com, health org, health magazine. So rates of depression and other mental health problems are higher than the national average throughout the mountainous and sparsely settled region known as Appalachia. They are higher still in the coal mining areas of central Appalachia, which includes most of eastern Kentucky. Poor mental health in Kentucky is part of a constellation of social problems that includes high joblessness and drug abuse. So poor mental health is, uh, there's a whole plethora, there's a whole buffet of problems here in Kentucky. So the fact that people are depressed in Kentucky is not a surprise. When you got all the poverty and you got all the abuse and the joblessness, and they say drug abuse, but just the violence uh, by itself. The domestic violence, the child abuse, the, the adult abuse, the police, uh, the, the police state who's Operation Unite, they're spending all their money not to create jobs but to throw more people into jail when I mean, there's no jobs. What else are you supposed to do? You know, like seriously, those people that you've thrown in jail, those nonviolent offenders are working men. They're working men who have families and you're putting a record on them and the criminal justice system, the best way to keep uh, your name out of criminal justice system is never to ever get into it. Hunter S. Thompson says just never even get into it for any reason whatsoever, not even for a traffic ticket, not for anything. People can be held up in court over a misdemeanor for years. So uh, poor mental health in Kentucky is a part of a constellation of social problems that includes high joblessness and drug abuse. When people don't have good jobs to support families, I think that leads to depression and anxiety, which in turn leads to substance abuse. Uh, Kentucky Governor Steve Brashear told the AP in 2008. And the other statistic, 10 states that consume too much fast food. We have one of the, we're one of the fattest states in the union, and one of the reasons is because we consume too much fast food. And in fact, it almost seems like we have no idea about health, because we're drinking too much, we're smoking too much, we're doing all this meth, there's all this depression and mental health, issues and all this violence uh, that's happening in Kentucky. But on top of all that, we're eating way too much fast food. Uh, we have heart problems, number one for cancer, number one for cardiovascular uh, deaths. So Americans love fast food. They spent $165 billion on it in 2010, but we don't all love it equally. Just like the obesity rate, fast food consumption varies widely by region and residents of some states disproportionately choose fast food over the over other options when they go out to eat so Kentucky Colonel Sanders was clearly onto something when he began selling takeout fried chicken dinners to busy families during the depression decades later later Kentuckians now spend 56 cents on every restaurant dollar on KFC 
and other fast food. In fact, KFC's parent company, Yum Brands, which is based in Louisville, owns Pizza Hut and Taco Bell, has begun lobbying Kentucky's governor to allow food stamps from certain residents to be accepted at fast food places. Kentucky, which has the country's second highest obesity rate, would just be the fourth state to approve the practice. So, Kentucky is... <laughs> We got a ton of issues, and now our, our governor and our state representatives are considering allowing food stamps to be spent at fast food restaurants. So, I mean, I, I don't know why not. You know, it's food. They're both food, and you can get pretty cheap food at fast food restaurants. But the health, someone's got to care about the health. You know, go out to eat once at McDonald's. Take, take your family out. Enjoy, you know, getting out of the house and doing something for your family, but also buy some bananas and get them and yourself to eat some bananas and some salads and some peanuts and cashews other places to get protein so there's uh, some uh, statistics out of uh, uh, for Kentucky I'm a German Sanfortonian Kentuckian right Louisvillean right now since I'm in Louisville will be here for several years um, I've been here for several years, will be here for several years. Born out of northern Kentucky, born in Covington, raised uh, in Gent, uh, on, on the line between Carroll and Gallatin County. Uh, went to school in Warsaw, went to school in Cincinnati, went to school here, and also a lot more other things in between there. Maysville, Cleveland, Chicago, Medina, um, Naples, Florida. So, okay. So, the 1855 riots. Bloody Monday, August 6, 1855, was Bloody Monday. That's when the white Americans attacked the Germans. So, white people didn't think that the Germans were American enough. They were, they were taking our jobs. They took our jobs. So, they're taking our jobs. They're speaking, you know, not our jobs, but like me as, you know, the, the nativist. They were taking our jobs. They spoke in different languages. Uh, than us true English, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, Baptist, us true white Americans, us true white American Baptist. We were uh, here first. We are more uh, prudish. We're more Puritan of a society, so we were more strict in our ways than these heathens, these German barbarians, these these uncouth and speaking dumb with their, their tongue. That's like, ich liebe dich. You know, that's, that's I love you in German. If ich liebe dich sounds, you know, like that in German, then, you know, I guess just saying hello might be, uh, throw them off. But then, Gesundheit, don't, every time you sneeze, like, Gesundheit. Well, that's German. Every time you say Fahrenheit, every time you say, every time you say hamburger, that's German. So, that's how the nativists were looking at us. I was the German who was speaking the tongue, and then, um, they came, um, uh, they were, uh, hating on us when we first got here, so we're just like the Mexicans. We're illegal immigrants. We didn't, have our papers. We didn't have citizenship rights. I'm not sure what they made us do at Castle Gardens, but they didn't send us back. And uh, in, in in the beginning, of, before it was regulated, uh, they, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that big a deal. Plus, they needed people to fight in their armies and, um, you know, uh, cheap labor and some other reasons why you'd want immigrants here uh, if you're the owners, right? So okay, Louisville, August. 5th, August 5th, 1855, experienced one of the city's darkest moments in just a matter of hours. August 6th was the election, so I guess the day before the election, in just a matter of hours. Louisville Protestants killed 22. They say 22, I think it's over 100. Louisville Protestants killed over 100 German and Irish Catholic immigrants. What caused the events leading up to the bloody riots? Did George Prentice, editor of the Louisville Journal, have any role? Louisville seemed an unlikely place for a religious and social riot, since Louisville was the home to thousands of German and Irish immigrants. The purpose of this article will explore the reasons behind the riot. In order to understand the riots, a brief study is needed to uh, of the time during the 1840s. During the presidential campaign in 1844, the German editor of the Louisville newspaper, Bio Bachter, advised the German population of Louisville to arm themselves. So, 1844, the German editor of the Louisville newspaper, Bio Bachter, advised the German population of Louisville to arm themselves and enforce their rights to vote at the poll. 
The German population had a right to vote. They were citizens of America, and just like anybody else. But the uh, problem was that they were in such large numbers. The white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Baptist didn't want us Germans to vote. They didn't want us Germans to vote, so they, they had to stop us Germans from voting. And this newspaper in 1845 says that we need to enforce our right to vote. We're allowed to be here, we're allowed to vote, and you can't stop it. So um, George Prentice, editor of the Louisville Daily Journal, translated the column and distributed the proclamation as a handbill. The native-born citizens of Louisville gathered in front of the office of the B.O. Bachter, and the editor of the paper had to flee for his life. So since he suggested to fight for their right to vote, and then he had he fled, that probably hurt the movement for the, the right for Germans to vote. Several Kentucky newspapers blamed Kentucky Senator Henry Clay's loss against James K. Polk on the foreign vote. So why did Henry Clay lost the Whig? That's because all the foreigners were voting for James Polk. James K. Polk won, and that's why Kentucky's Henry Clay wasn't able to win. So they were blaming the uh, 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 foreign Germans on uh, their loss on the foreign Germans. So many Whigs started to drift towards nativism. By 1845, Walter Halderman, editor of the Louisville Morning Courier, began to take up the nativist cause and attack the Catholics. And the nativists held their first national convention. So they didn't like the religion. They didn't like the way they speak. They didn't like their culture. They didn't like their newspapers. They just didn't like them. They didn't fit in with them. They weren't white enough. They didn't fit into the definition of whiteness. They uh, uh, weren't true blue white Americans like them which actually nobody's true blue Americans if you're white, right? Because you'd have to be red or brown is what I see, but, you know, if you're Native Americans, you know, they say they're, they're red. So the nativists began to call themselves the Native American Party, and Halderman represented Louisville. Halderman, okay, so who's Halderman? Walter Halderman was the editor of the Louisville Morning Courier. So these editors are very influential when it comes to political uh, matters. Nativists began to call themselves the Native American Party, and Hardeman represented Louisville. So, and something else with the papers, George Prentice was the one spreading the, the fear um, in uh, 1855 to get the anti-Germans, uh, to get the anti-German sediment inflamed, and then he was also the same one to do it in the 1930s, 1920s. Just was, had a very strong anti-German bent. So, many Whigs started to become nativists. They started to become racist bigots against the Germans who they considered were not whites. They were not part of the white club. German and Irish were not white people when they got to America. Uh, in 1849, the Louisville German paper Anzinger, which is the longest running newspaper, I think, for 80, 80 to 90 years. So in 1849, the Louisville German newspaper Anzinger encouraged Germans to retain their native language and customs. The organization known as the National Central Union of Free Germans, who had their headquarters in Louisville, advocated women's suffrage, free trade, denunciation of the Roman Catholic religion, and abolition of slavery and equality of the black man. By 1850, Louisville had 13,782 foreign-born residents. Nativists saw immigrants holding on to the old country and the old ways, not adopting to American traditions. They also resented the refugees of the Revolution of 1848, which promoted the Louisville platform, and the Louisville platform, which was their, you know, their the planks on their platform, which is what they believed in, kind of their manifesto, which stated that the immigrants were against European despots. The immigrants did not want, did not like the tyranny of Europe. They did not care for race and class privilege. They did not care for the institution of slavery, and the Jesuits and the Pope. So the Louisville native residents turned against the revolutionaries of 1848. The 1848, they were speaking a different language. They were radical. They had different ideas about how to govern. They were against oppression and hierarchy. And um, they were for uh, legalizing or uh, ab abolishing slavery. They were for women's right to vote, women's right to vote. So, of course, the white people, the white male property owners, Protestants who didn't like the Germans were... Uh, didn't like them for many reasons. They didn't like their ideas, they didn't like how they were different, and that probably was uh, an appeal to some of their women. So they're probably stealing their women, too. The white men were like, oh, no, these damn Germans are taking all of our women. 
So, more coming up. 1855, No Nothing Riots here in Louisville, Kentucky. August 5th, the 6th. Uh,